Alright guys, hope to grab a kick in today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far with the new season beginning much earlier this year than it usually has done. Rambo's given his thoughts on how the Optic team are preparing and they're feeling good going into the new year, but Dashi has also stated that he does definitely intend to stay in Call of Duty until he wins the World Championship, but if he wins champs, he'd actually rather prefer to go over to Valorant and try and compete on the pro side there. Very much into it, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you are new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thanks very much indeed for doing that one. Love this for the Ravens, actually. The Black Ops 1 menu music to me is like, a, in my opinion, that might be the greatest we've ever seen in COD history. It just brings back so many, like, honestly, goosebumps hearing those tunes. But speaking of London, Peter Bowman, an absolute legend from the kind of MLG Activision CWL days, has actually left there, kind of recently went on to some new opportunities over with Wrecked Global, the kind of owners of the London Royal Ravens. Now, he was actually hit with a layoff, so I wasn't really aware that there was many layoffs going on from Wrecked global but um yeah it's a bit of a really strange like at management over at the london side because they kind of partnered with rogue the company that got bought out by koi esports the kind of spanish organization by ebay that we now believe london might end up moving to madrid or something in the upcoming seasons because they're now not owned anymore by the guys they used to be owned by but wrecked global i thought were the management group but maybe by getting bought out there were layoffs in place so um, strange situation but just to show that uh, you know peter bowman again is uh, looking for a new opportunity in the gaming space because he was let go from Wrecked Global, the owners of the London Royal Ravens. So something as serious as going on over there. And we don't really know what that means for the upcoming season. We saw Eba even say himself that they tried to, we believe, rebrand the Ravens to something else. Maybe even relocate the Ravens to, as I say, Madrid or something. And um, but they were, weren't allowed to do it by the CDL, probably because the deadline was up. But maybe next season they can and that we may well no longer have a London team. Hopefully what we get is maybe they buy London and take it to Madrid and then a new organisation comes through with expansion and then puts the London team back plus a Manchester team and we're absolutely frying. But certainly I think the drama is not yet up in that London Royal Ravens camp. Just to show this as well I thought was pretty cool with the kind of well look they're going absolutely hard right now the Modern Warfare 2 marketing guys from the Activision side. Absolutely everything is Modern Warfare 2 branded right now. You'll see it all over the shop and as Boston Breach say here, Balanced Guns, Good Maps and Ninja Perk what are the three? I mean to me it's got to be Good Maps and then probably the ones that Boston choose are pretty good because out of these other ones yeah I think balance guns is pretty important because it was good fun playing a game like Black Ops 3 where you could pretty much use anything and it was viable and then, uh, you know, the ninja perk as well. Of course, it's always a good thing, but like, look, we'll see if any of these three things actually make it into Modern Warfare 2. And speaking of stuff in Modern Warfare 2, I thought this is interesting that was spotted on Reddit here. This is pretty much nothing is happening on the right stick. You guys can see here that there's no movement on the right stick at all, but this is pure aim assist dragging the kind of, um, well, as he's drifting here on the right hand side and then look how much the player drags the aim assist over. So, I mean, yeah, it's interesting really to see because a few years ago, I felt like the aim assist was getting a bit weaker. If you guys played Infinite Warfare a lot, you'll know that game was actually pretty hard to shoot on. Shooting the NV4 long range, the K-Bar especially, like it wasn't so easy. Your gun didn't just hold onto them and snap on targets forever. But in the recent games, the aim assist, I mean, look how much the aim assist is just dragging him around here and he's not really doing anything with his right analog stick. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know if my aim assist personally is this strong, but still, this looks incredibly strong to be honest. And there certainly is a good argument to say you've got to nerf this because even Dashi mentioned this rather recently that he would love to see the aim assist get significantly nerfed or maybe even turned off right who knows I'm sure a guy like Dashi could probably compete with no aim assist on at all and that really would separate the wheat from the chaff right in the sense of who actually are the really talented pro players if there was no aim assist I feel like aim assist is okay I don't necessarily mind it in the game I think it would look pretty ugly watching some of the even the pro players play with no aim assist and kind of like long range combat but still it would really accelerate the skill gap because as it stands the skill gap is diminished by the year and as everyone says nowadays everyone can shoot straight in cards and that's certainly been helped by the fact that the aim assist is getting stronger and stronger year on year and you can understand why Activision are pushing for this you know they want to help out the casual players but even as Crim says you know controller is always going to be better in close quarters than mouse and keyboard regardless but still maybe he would like to see the kind of um, aim assist range and strength get diminished to some degree which I certainly think would be a positive thing for the COD team but unfortunately is rather unlikely to happen I would imagine let's talk Optic Texas thing they go into the 
the new season is one of the big question marks. We still don't know the substitute situation right now and who may or may not be available and what they might decide to do because of course the Prime is coming up the first event of the season in December, not actually that long away in the grand scheme of things. And in December, we're going to get to know who are the best players, at least in the challenger side, what the plan should be for a lot of these teams to make the call on who they actually pick up as their substitutes. And a lot of teams may well leave it to them. But of course, look, everyone's hoping that this entire roster can work again together. It'd be tragic scenes really for the community if anything goes wrong with Illy. And we saw earlier today he won the throwback tournament on Carl War. So you'd imagine he's probably feeling not too bad. But um, yeah, how well is the team feeling going into the new year? Because even Aix has mentioned the fact that, look, Illy, he hasn't really done that much on social media, hasn't been tweeting that much. Is there any kind of resentment being held there behind the scenes between the players? Seems unlikely to me that it at least is being held on the surface. I wouldn't be surprised if, if things start to go wrong with Optic that these problems do reoccur. But if they start out the season well, they probably will be okay. So Rambo says here in a clip, I'll just about to share for you guys that like everything's okay. They're feeling good internally. And of course, Illy's getting ready for the new game as well. The other clip to share is from none other than Dashi though, talking about his future with Call of Duty and potentially beyond. He obviously has made it rather clear. He doesn't really enjoy these recent games quite as much as maybe he used to back in the day. It's not quite Infinite Warfare, even World War II, but certainly Black Ops 4, right? I'm sure Dashi was having a great time with the Maddox in that game. He knows the CODs nowadays are kind of more of a grind. I think he's even kind of said that, you know, feels a bit more like he's got to get up and go to work. Didn't really is so much of a hobby as it used to, but you know, obviously he's getting paid for, for his time and all this type of stuff and he's trying to be the best. But he actually mentions here that he would probably, if he had a choice between the two, go and play professional Valorant. Whether he's good enough to really go into a franchise team in Valorant is a question that is open and he'd certainly need more experience playing it to kind of prove to a lot of players that he is able to do that. But still, he would probably take that opportunity over Call of Duty right now, but his first goal is to win champs. But if he does win champs, he may well just dip. And Henny, what are you seeing down there? Why is he leaving so quiet? He's back home enjoying family time. 160 yards. You don't need to make sure about anything, Nixa. Come on, man. What is this? <laughs> He's good, man. The team's good right now. We're everyone's enjoying their time off and their reset. We'll get going here in a week or so, or a few weeks, rather. Ah, the game comes out like literally a week and a half, right? Right. We're going with a bit more okay. club here. But Valve franchise offered you a contract, same money as you get on Optic. Would you find it? Honestly, I don't think I'd ever quit off or quit COD until I won champs. I mean, at least that's like my goal. You know what I mean? If I want, I think if we win champs this year, I'm out. <laughs> I'll be like, I don't know. Like, like peace. Like it's, I don't know. Like competing in this game is also hard, guys. It's like so like only like five. Sorry, we're playing sharp. They're gonna default here, guys. Only like five. Oh, they're what? Not they're like, gonna default, yeah. they're gonna default, they're gonna default, they're gonna default. Only like five potential teams. Get on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we know that Dashi's one of these like just absolute freak gamer talents that's just unbelievable at everything they play. And the fact that he's so good at Valorant is actually kind of absurd because he's like radiant top, like 0.01% type player, which is incredibly impressive given how good he is on the controller, of course. But also the fact that during the majority of this past season, he was just playing at COD on the regular and like being a great player in Call of Duty MVP candidates and then in his downtime goes to play Valorant and is still competing for Radiance and then mixing it up with all the actual Valorant pros in the kind of ranked ladders and leaderboards and plays an awful lot with the ranked guys as well plays an awful lot with the kind of Valorant pro players as well knows and gets along with a lot of those guys because they've been teamed with him they've been playing against Dash Pack as he is I believe in the game and even you know some players are talking about this here so we know that Dash is incredibly talented at all the different games he plays Valorant especially whether he's good enough to actually get into the Valorant franchise scene I don't really no, I think he would need to have more experience and time playing under IGLs. I mean, he'd probably have to grind through the tier two scene in Valorant to get his opportunity in tier one because there aren't many spots in North American franchising in Valorant as is now just kicking in. So I don't expect Dasha to be leaving Colony time soon, but it is nonetheless interesting that he mentions that he only really has one more goal in Call of Duty to try and accomplish. And once he achieves that, he's probably going to dip. He says, look, if he wins champs this year on Optic, he might just be gone because he likes Valorant a lot more, doesn't really enjoy the grind of Call of Duty as much as he once did and um, you know he's actually kind of eager to go and play Valorant if he could which is a really interesting comment I mean look we've obviously seen in the past the likes of Formal doing Halo and COD could someone do COD and Valorant a completely different input model you wouldn't put it past Dashi the guys are absolutely built different in terms of FPS games but uh, look he says he's going to stay around he doesn't intend to leave COD anytime soon unless he wins champs so I mean look some people are going to joke around and say oh, okay Dashi's going to stay around in COD for an awful long time then but if he does win champs apparently he's definitely considered 
considering going like as soon as he does. I mean, we kind of wondered this about even Skump, right? Like if Skump wins champs this year, will he just retire on the spot? Like I wouldn't necessarily put it past him because like, look, I'm sure Skump would love to get another ring. I'm sure he likes competing, but at the same time, I'm sure another ring for Skump would be kind of what would cap off his career. And if he did that, he might say, you know what, that's the perfect time to dip out and call it a day. No one else has gone out on a high like that. So maybe that's in the Opta guy's minds, but I would have thought maybe that's valid for Skump, but I wouldn't have thought that'd be valid for Dashi, but apparently it is. So what questions does this rage on? If you guys are an Optic fan, what do you guys think about this? Because Dashi obviously is incredibly talented at cards, but the question has been there and the reason we believe why he was going to get dropped from the Optic team during the offseason was out of game stuff. Maybe not fully committed to the grinds. And we also heard that when Illy came back, the team wasn't quite as locked in as they were when before Illy left. And, uh, you know, we believe that Dashi, look, he tries really hard. He's trying to be the best. He's learning an awful lot from the guys around him. But I think the Illy thing derailed that a little bit and Dashi couldn't quite get on the same grind that he was on right at the start of the season. You would think that with a team with a new breath of fresh air into them, they'd be able to achieve that and that wouldn't really be an issue for the upcoming season. But I think some people might say, and maybe understandably so, is Dashi's heart really in it, right? Like, I mean, look, during the season, there was people joking aches and the like that, I mean, look, Dashi is just playing Valorant all day. That's where, you know, Dashi, Skies, Neptune, or maybe not Neptune, but Hydra, right? These players, you know, they like a lot of Valorant stuff and Dashi is most certainly included. And Dashi's not going to not play Valorant during the season, which I think is fine to play other games in the downtime and stuff. But if it's taken away from the full focus on Call of Duty, it might not be for the betterment of the team, right? Because, I mean, I think Ivan saw an interesting article recently with Cold Zero, like a legendary Counter-Strike player, where he said, look, nowadays, I don't, I, I don't know if he said I don't shower, but he was like, I don't leave the house. I don't enjoy my life. I just play Counter-Strike. And his point was really that he's giving it his absolute all. And like, I don't agree with his sentiment, right? Did he actually try to enjoy your life regardless? And I like, build Counter-Strike into that. But I think his point was he's just putting an absolute all to trying to become the best player he can be. And he qualified for the major in Rio, Brazil, coming up rather soon. So I guess it worked in that sense. But I think some people would say, look, if Dashi's not fully committed to this, and if he wants to go to Valorant when he kind of caps off his Call of Duty career, then how much is he really going to give to the competitive content? If that's not really where his heart is, and his heart is probably in trying to compete in professional Valorant, if he could, then, you know, is he going to give 100%? I think that Dashi will, you know, probably will do his absolute best. But I mean, look, even if Dashi believes he's giving his absolute all, if in the back of his mind, he's thinking, you know what, COD isn't quite, maybe it's not for me in the long term, then will he be as committed as maybe other players will be? That's a question. And I think he was at the start of last season, then that fell off a little bit. And of course, they're putting massive faith in Dashi to achieve that this year once again. But I think questions might be raised about this and potentially understandably so. But Rambo says, look, they're good to go. They're feeling good for the upcoming season. So of course, look, we expect them to be a top team. I think I agreed with kind of where the flank guys put Optic yesterday in terms of like they're an A-tier team or really top of the contenders for the upcoming tournament. We know what they are capable of, but there are still some question marks for the upcoming season. Maybe this included, right? But look, I'm not going to complain if Dashi goes to Valorant because that'd be crazy as well. And he is consistently dropping like mega clips like this against top players in the Valorant side also. And uh, look, all the top Valorant guys that play the Radiant Ladders, they know who Dashi is, right? They know that he's a god pro, but also they know that he's absolutely frying on, um, well, in the ranked leaderboards as well and getting consistently Radiant top one and the like. I mean, yeah, that was a pretty disgusting clutch as well. So definitely enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. It would be interesting to see Dashi involved in some sort of CDL World Cup sometime or another. Hinch and Maniac were actually talking about this just the other day. Imagine what it would be like to have a CDL World Cup. And uh, yeah, some have certainly come up with their ideas. Of course, Dashi here on Team Canada with Gunless, Asim and Illy. That could be a good option. Rambo, Novus, Jimbo, Moho kind of being there as the coaches and substitutes respectively. But yeah, it would be great to see something like this. I mean, I'm pretty sure Overwatch has even had World Cups already. So not sure why we can't get this in Call of Duty. But hopefully if Champs is earlier this year as we expected to be, there's a good couple of months there where before the second year of the title, we can throw in some, you know, great stuff like World Cups with any luck. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell the YouTube gods this is a good video. And as like you should see it as well. And upgrade the competitive quality community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I'll see you next time.